Namaskar and good afternoon, everyone. First of all, on behalf of the Embassy of India Dublin, I wish every Indian on our Constitution Day. To commemorate this important day in India's democracy, today we have with us Professor Shripati Tudu to share his views with us under the India Ireland Friendship Lecture Series on the topic Revisiting the Values of Indian Constitution through translation into Santali and an experience under indigenous identity in 21st century. Professor Shripati is assistant professor at the Institute of Language Studies and Research, Calcutta, and also in the Department of Santali at Siddho Kano Birsha University, West Bengal. Professor Shripati was born in Bankura district of West Bengal in a traditional Santal village community and he was always been fond of rich Santali culture and language. He completed his graduation and master's degree in this language with literature as major subject. He is also a writer and poet, and his major achievement is translation of the Indian constitution in Santali language, a significant feat which was widely acclaimed in India and abroad. Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi also mentioned about this achievement in his Monkey Bar. His current research focuses on Santali culture, language, and also fictional and poetic writings. Apart from translation of our constitution in 2021, Professor Shripati has published three more books. Mm. One is Robi Garan Tugemor, which is Ravindranath Tagore's selected. 65 poems in Santali and Isijo Ruti Kahani, a short storybook in Santali. He also co edited Chuk Jia, Honor Hia, Kobi, Sharda Prasad Kisku, book of research article on famous Santali poet Sharda Prasad Kisku in 2021. He has recently been awarded the prestigious Sunday Times Calcutta Literary Award 2022 in recognition of his exemplary work of translation of the Indian constitution. Mr. Tudu looks forward to work more in this field to cover every aspect of the Indian constitution in near future. Before I invite Professor Shripati to deliver the lecture, I would request His Excellency Ambassador of India to kindly say a few words on this occasion. Namaskar, uh, my very warm greetings to uh, everyone connected with this program. Uh, um, uh, and also my special thanks to Professor Sripati Tuduji for kindly accepting our invitation. Uh, I would like to begin by applauding uh, Dr. Sripati Taduji Tuduji for taking this great initiative to translate Indian constitution into Santhali language. Uh, this is uh, particularly important uh, for, for our country and also uh, coming from a non-English speaking uh, area and, uh, and um, uh, a small village in Uttar Pradesh. I really relate to uh, the significance and enormity of uh, what you have done uh, uh, because a constitution is not a mere book. Uh, constitution is not a literary publication or just an ordinary publication. It is a living document. It's embodiment of the nation, the national ethos, national values, national sentiments. Uh, and therefore, uh, its significance is not in the content in terms of words, but it's a spirit. Uh, its significance is in terms of values that it echoes. The, uh, the civilizational ethos and values of the country and the people of India. And the uh, spirit of justice and liberty and equality and fraternity, uh, th these are not empty words. Uh, th these are the values on the basis of which 1.4 billion people of India have been unified into one single nation. Uh, for a country which is so diverse, so complex, so multi-layered, so much of regional linguistic uh, religious diversity uh, of ways of uh, living, costumes, uh, incredible diversity that our country has, it's only unified by one single document, which is uh, the Constitution of India. And therefore, it is extremely important for all the people of India to feel that 
intimate personal uh, connection with the spirit and uh, uh, the values of the constitution. Uh, also, uh, uh, I know that the, reading the, the debates of the Constituent Assembly, we discovered that uh, a lot of effort has gone into the drafting process. And what document emerged and was adopted uh, on 26th of November 1949 and uh, finally came into force uh, on 26th of January 1950, it's a, uh, it's a compromise document. It is a consensus document based on uh, give and take and balancing and harmonizing of conflicting and competing uh, interests and demands of very diverse population. So it is very important for us to realize that in the, in the constitution, there is an integrity. Uh, it's a whole single unified architecture on, uh, on the basis of which the country is to be governed. And there's no scope for cherry picking that I like only this article, I like only this para, I like uh, this uh, right, but I don't like this uh, duty. So it has to be seen in that proper fuller context, holistic context. And that will not happen unless every single citizen of India feels a personal connection. Uh, understands not just the uh, the language, not just the words, but imbibes the spirit of each word. And that is why uh, I feel uh, the work that you have done to translate uh, the Indian constitution in Santali language so that uh, more than 7.5 7, uh, 7 million uh, speakers, they feel that they that they own it, they, they understand it, they absorb and imbibe uh, everything which is contained in the constitution. This is of great value. And also uh, with regard to constitution uh, uh, drafting and the language uh, aspect, I can mention that uh, Indian constitution was uh, very strongly influenced by the Irish constitution uh, of uh, 1937. And I'm very happy to share with you that uh, even though the, na the uh, uh, native Irish language speakers in 1937 were very, very few, but as a matter of principle, as a matter of national pride, the people of Ireland uh, produced constitution in two language as original texts, you know, English and Irish. And, and uh, in Irish language version was not only considered authentic, but it was to be given priority and precedence over the English text if uh, there is any confusion or, uh, or a discrepancy. Uh, this is something very significant for us to, to learn from uh, Ireland. The, the importance of uh, own uh, language. Uh, and on the other hand, if you look at Indian context, then uh, as you all know that the constitution was drafted in English. Uh, and in 1949, uh, uh, the number of English speakers uh, would have been less than 1% or so. So think of the challenge for the Indian people, the people of India, to, to understand what was actually produced uh, and what was adopted in 1950. Uh, and also it is, it pains me that uh, the, 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 even the Hindi uh, translation, it, uh, there was huge debate, extensive debate in the Constituent Assembly on the translation of the uh, con uh, constitution in Hindi. And I, it was agreed that it will it will not be an Ing, Hindi version. It will be merely a, a Hindi translation of the constitution. Uh, like, uh, the inferiority of the Hindi Hindi uh, translation uh, is very evident in the constitutional assembly itself. So uh, we are very happy that there is now under Prime Minister Modi's leadership, there is a sense of. Uh, cultural pride in own, own heritage and the dignity that is being provided to every language of India, whether it's, a, in the, it's a recognized in the const, constitution as a, one of the scheduled languages uh, and all other languages, uh, they are being uh, given due respect and opportunity to flourish. Unless uh, all languages of India flourish uh, and feel vibrancy and energy, uh, uh, it is a loss to the entire country.
Uh, so I think uh, the topic that you have chosen uh, to highlight the linguistic uh, uh, importance uh, in uh, having the constitution in Indian uh, local languages, uh, this is very, very touching to me. And I feel uh, it's very important for the country uh, that every, every language, speakers of every language feel and own this uh, um, law of the land. Otherwise, it will remain uh, the text only for the lawyer, for the lawyers and uh, legal experts, which is not the purpose. Uh, once again, I really appreciate your uh, painstaking efforts and your your mission to uh, 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 translate uh, cons Indian constitution into Santali language, and this is a great example for all other uh, linguistic groups to follow. Thank you so much. In Johar. Thank you, Akhilesh Ji, for your valuable introductory remarks and also for inviting me for this speech on celebrating the 100 years of independence of Ireland. And thank you to all of the members of Embassy of India, Dublin, Ireland, for arranging such a wonderful India-Ireland friendship lectures series on the eve of India's 75 years of independence as Azadika Amrit Mohotsav also. I express my gratitude to all of you. I do also express Johar to the Sampargada Santal Society chairperson and director Institute of Language Studies and Research Kolkata Vice Chancellor Sidokano Birsa University, Purulia, and Honorable President and Prime Minister of India for giving me this opportunity. My primary and core submission here is the Constitution of India is dedicated to its people or to the demos who constitute the core of a democracy, which is by definition of the people by the people and for the people. The constitution of India is highly empowering for all the people of India. And if we look closely, we will see that it has provision to protect the rights and identity of all the people cutting across linguistic, cultural, and ethnic identities. Such a marvelous constitution with its empowering features promoted me to translate it for the people, for my community, who need to know many of its features and provision. In this talk, today I shall talk today about the feature of the Indian constitution and about the history and uniqueness of the Santali community and would show how both are interconnected and com complementary to each other. On 15th August 1947, we got independence for, from British rule and on 26th November 1949, we adopted, enacted, and accepted for us the Constitution of India. This largest written constitution of the world was done by the drafting committee of Constitution Assembly led by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Although there are many languages, many festivals, many cultural diversities in India, we are united in a single identity we all are Indians and that's our unity. This cultural diversity of India make itself a heritage. We believe in Ek Bharat, Sreshta Bharat. The main motto of Indian constitution is reflected in its preamble of the constitution, which gives supreme rights to the people of the country. I quote here the Republican quality of the preamble of the Indian constitution. 
we, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic and to ensure to all its citizens justice, social, economics, and political, liberty of thoughts, expression, belief, faith, and worship, equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all. Fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity of integrity of the nation. In our Constituent Assembly, this 26th day of November 1949, do hereby adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this Constitution. I translate these key words of the preamble in Santali language in the following ways. Abo Bharat ran this way. Bharat Miktang Ahut Santariya Dharam De Pahtari Diswatariya Apnat Lekate Tear Rakap Lagi Sotea Sala Kiria Atangedabon Ar Onaren Sanam Nagariya Kolagi Santa Kia, Kaudi Aria, or Raj Aria Hog Vichir. Chinta, Monat Sodor, Patio, or Dharam Serva Repunurgel. Murjada, or Daurea Sangha. Or Nukusanam Kotalare, Sogor Boy Hasage, Ter Rakatate, Manmia Mahima, Sante, Jatiari Zumit, or Jugut, Rihit Katlagi. Aboa Gonopuri Sodre, Tehen, Ge Aresai, Puge Aresahit Rea, Bagetur November Re, Noa Songbidan, Angoch, Lagu, Ar Aboko Lagi, Soprot Edabon. Indian Constitution takes several ideas from ten countries like UK, US, the Soviet Union, Australia, France, Ireland. Canada, Japan, Germany, and South Africa. As previously, Okiles Ji mentioned that we got the idea of directive principle of state policy, the nomination of members to Rajya Sobha, and the method of election of the president from the constitution of Ireland. At the same time, I feel proud to do mention that our current, pres current Honorable President of India, Her Excellency Mrs. Dropodi Murmu, also belongs to the Santal Society and Indigenous Community of India. The Indian Constitution is the world largest one of a sovereign nation. At its enactment, it had 395 articles in 22 parts and in eight schedules at about 1,45,000 words. It is the second longest active constitution after the constitution of Alabama in the world. In the current status, the constitution contains the preamble and 470 articles which are grouped into 25 parts with 12 schedules and five appendix. It has been amended 105 times. The latest amendment became effective on 10th August, 2021. The constitution articles are grouped into following parts, preamble with the words socialist, secular, and integrity were added in 1976 by the 42nd Amendment. It is schematized in the following way. Part one, the union and its territory. Part two, citizenship. Part three, fundamental rights. Part four, directive principle of state policy. Part 4A, fundamental duties, part five, the union, part six, the states, 
part 7 states in b part of the first schedule replaced part 8 union territories part 9 panchayats then municipalities cooperative societies schedule and tribal area relation between the nation and the states finance property contract and suites trades and commerce within india service under the nation and states tribunals election special provision relating to certain classes languages emergency provision miscellaneous amendment of the constitution temporary transitional and special provision short title date of commencement authority text in hindi and repeals like that there are 12 schedules in indian constitution first schedule list india's state and territories changes in their borders and the laws used to make the that changes schedule second schedule list of salaries of public official judge and the comptroller and auditor general schedule third forms of oaths lets the oaths of office for elected official and judges fourth details the allocation of seat in rajya sabha by the state or union territory fifth probi provides for the administration and controller control of scheduled areas and scheduled tribes areas areas and tribes requiring special protection schedule 6 provision made for the administration of tribal areas in assam meghalaya tripura and mizoram schedule 7 central government state and concurrent list of responsibilities eight official language nine validation of certain act and regulation schedule 10 anti defection provision for members of parliament and state legislature 11 panchayat raj and 12 municipalities articles 12 to 35 of indian constitution deal with the fundamental rights these human rights are conferred upon the citizen of india for the constitution tell that these right are inviolable right to life right to dignity right to education etc and all the sum under one of the six main fundamental rights these are six fundamental rights of indian constitution these are right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation right to freedom or of freedom of religion cultural and educational right right to constitutional remedies the fundamental duties which were added by the 42nd amendment act of the constitution in 1976 in addition to sort to creating and promoting culture and it's also strengthened the hands of the legislature in enforcing these duties by the base the fundamental rights there are 11 fundamental duties under article 51a santals are the indigenous community of india which is officially known as scheduled tribe as per the lokur committee which was set up in 1965 to look into the criteria for defining scheduled tribes under the article 341 and 342 of the indian constitution 
the committee recommended five criteria for identification, namely primitive traits, distinct culture, geographical isolation, shyness of contact with the community at large, and backwardness. A sustainable list of scheduled tribes in India is recognized as tribals under the Constitution of India. In 2020, the India population is estimated at 138 crore 4385 people according to UN data. The Indian population is equivalent to 17.7% of the total world population. The tribal people constitutes 8.6% of India's population. There are more than 700 tribal communities across 28 states and eight union territories in India. Language spoken in India belong to Austroasiatic language families is around 3% of the population. As per People's Linguistic Survey of India, India has the second highest number of languages, 780, after Papua New Guinea, 840. According to the Census of India of 2001, India has 122 major languages and one 1,599 other languages. However, figures from other source vary primarily due to differences in definition of the terms language and dialects. The 2001 census recorded 30 languages which were spoken by more than a million native speakers and 122 which were spoken by more than 10,000 people. According to the most recent census of 2021, according to the most recent census of 2011, after through linguistic scrutiny, edit and rationalization on 90, 19,569 raw linguistic affiliation, the census recognized 1,369 rationalized mother tongue and 1,474 names which were treated as unclassified and related to other mother tongue category. Among the 1,369 rationalized mother tongues which are spoken by 10,000 or more speaker. They are further grouped into appropriate set that resulted into total 121 languages. In these 121 languages, 22 are already part of the eighth schedule of the Constitution of India, and other 99 languages are termed as total of other languages, which is one sort as of the other language recognized in 2001 census. I belong to Santal society and my mother tongue is Santali. Santali is the most widely spoken language of the Munda sub family of, of the Austroasiatic languages related to Ho and Mundari spoken mainly in the Indian state of Assam, Bihar, Sarkhand, Mizoram, Odisha, Tripura, and West Bengal. Santali is one of the India's 22nd schedule languages as per the eighth schedule of the constitution and was given status and official encouragement. It is also recognized as the additional official language of the state of Jharkhand and West Bengal. Santali is spoken by around 7.4 million people in India. Bangladesh, 
Bhutan and Nepal, making it the third most spoken Austroasiatic language after Vietnamese and Khmer. Families with smaller number of speakers are Austroasiatic language with some 10 million speakers forming together 3% of the national population. Austroasiatic languages of mainland India are the Khasi and Munda languages, including Bhumiz and Santali. The language of the Nicobar Iceland also form part of this language. With the exception of Khasi and Santali, all Austroasiatic languages on Indian territory are endangered. Until the 19th century, Santali had no written script and all shared knowledge of the community was transmitted orally from generation to generation. European interest in the study of the language of India led to the first effort at documenting the Santali language. Bengali, Odia, and Roman scripts were first used to write Santali before 86. 1860 by European anthropologists, folklorists, and missionaries, including Reverend A. Campbell, Elo Scrapsrud, and Paul Olaf Bodin. Their efforts resulted in Santali dictionaries, versions of folk tales, and the study of mythology, syntax, and phonetic structure of the language. Santali was mainly an oral language until the development of Alchiki script by Pandit Raghunath Murmu in 1925. Alchiki is the script of Santali language and it is alphabetic, sharing none of the syllabic properties of the other Indic script and is now widely used to write Santali in India. Bangladesh and Nepal. The 92nd Amendment Act of Constitution of India, officially known as the Constitution 92nd Amendment Act 2020, amended the eighth schedule to the Constitution so as to include Bodo, Dogri, Moithili, and Santali languages, thereby raising the total number of languages listed in the schedule to 22. Santali was honored in December 2013 when the University Grant Commission of India decided to introduce the language in the national eligibility test to allow lecturers to use the language in college and universities. All this point to the fact that the Indian constitution has the provision to provide empowering support to all the people of India and, the, and that is why the Indian constitution is highly empowering in nature, which I spoke of, my, of in the very beginning. Now I shall say a little bit about the reflection of the spirit of the preamble of the constitution on Santal society. In the preamble of constitution of India, India declared itself as a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic nation. Santal society also reflect this characteristic of Indian constitution through its traditional Maji system. Every social activity of a Santal village is led by this Maji system. In terms of sovereign, a Maji Baba as a village headman is the supreme of the village and all village issues are brought to the Maji Baba and he tries to solve the same with the help of other members of Maji Baisi. In terms of socialist system, on the occasion of social festival, rituals, and other relevant events among with family-based activities such as Satyar, Bapla, Sakamorej, Bhandan, that means birth, marriage, 
divorce and death ceremony are executed by the villagers led by majima paji jamjote is also a mechanism by non santal can be included in santal society in terms of the secular spirit the people of santal society are equal in the eyes of society in the matter of judgment in any case impartiality plays a vital role for the establishment of a justice as previously mentioned santals are the followers of sari that is truthness that's why in such cases maji baba plays his neutral role policy politely at atubichar that is village judiciary in term of democracy selection of social post like maji parani jogmaji godet naike kudam naike these are social post is conducted at the beginning of mark chandra the first month of the according to santal calendar in every year in this time they decide whether they need to change the designated social person or not accordingly they proceed the matter through their own traditional system they also ensure the 100% concurrence of the members of the society in such selection in term of the in term of the republic spirit the highest power belongs to the people of the society although maji baba is the headman of the society he never takes any major decision alone he discuss the matter with his supporting hand as well as the villagers at ulhiduru that is village assembly principle of justice is also followed in santal society economic condition of major part of the society is depended on primary producer of agri horticulture production system with small farm holding size become very poor a little part of the society is financially stable most significant matter that there is no upper caste lower caste concept no caste system or untouchability or white black discrimination in entire santal society there is a proverb in santal society hor khange peda that means all human beings are relatives and this is also the reality of the society in time of any judgment of any cases they always try to solve the problem with the base of its truth they never do any discrimination in their consciousness maji baba secure all the rights of the of every dweller of his village maji ramdas kudu reska 1854 to 1951 sadhu ramchand murmu 1897 to 1955 pandit raghunath murmu 1905 to 1982 kobi sarada prasad kisku 1929 to 1997 thakur prasad murmu 1931 to 2018 jadunath kudu 1949 to 2018 rupchand hemram katha badohi 1941 to 2018 are the major santali writers and philosopher of the society currently many writers and poets are continuously writing and they contribute to the development of santali literature santali language included in eighth schedule of the constitution of india 2003 through its 92nd constitution amendment act and in india at present around 15 university of her post graduate studies in santali and more than 100 colleges offer santali as a major subject in college level through its own alchiki script in 1784 the first armed rebellion occurred against the colonial british 
and this was led by the santals if any of you read bradley's treaties story of indian upland free downloadable ebook you may notice his whole chapter about pahadia and augustus cleveland or chilimili sahib to pahadias he wrote of his sudden death but did not mention being killed by tilka murmu a santal freedom fighter indians have now accepted his contribution to the freedom movement and the government erected his statues in bhagalpur after independence the santal rebellion popularly known as santal hul in 1855 to 1856 began as a reaction to end the revenue system of the british east india company usury practices and the zamindari system in the tribal belt of of what was the known as the bengal presidency in present day jharkhand and bengal purulia birbhum and bankura in eastern india mobilized about 10000 santals against both the british colonial british colonial authority and the corrupted zamindari system it was a revolt against the opposition of the colonial rule propagated through a deserted revenue system enforced by the local zamindars the police and the courts of the legal system set up by the british east india company the santals lived in and depended on forest in 1832 the british east india company demarcated the damin eco region in present day jharkhand and invited santals to settle in the region due to promise of land and economic amenities a large number of santals came to settle from dhalbhum manbhum hazaribag medinipur etc diba and kisun martin porans mentioned that southern santal tradition of saraikela regarding rebellion in the latter part of 19th century tradition speak of two brothers diba and kisun the santals of mayurbhanj also share the tradition it is said that about 60 parganas had taken part in the revolution in the rebellion but the actual extent of the area could not be as treated specially the rebellion attracted the attention of the administration of necessity of ameliorative action between 15 and 21 may 19 1918 the santals of mayurbhanj rose against what they perceived to be the threat for a forcible conscription to the lapar crops bond for thans in the fact of an uprising the government had to abandon the recruitment plan the santal rose on 14 june 1918 for not listening to various outstanding grievances such as chokidari tax forest regulation act etc having arrested their collective ability of defect the government measure the santals were now in a position position to extend their insurgency against all other kinds of opposition of the government in august 1922 the tribal assert 
their traditional rights to use the jungle and fish in trunk. Movement of Jungle Mahal. You must have heard a lot about Santals and Jungle Mahal. But between 1921 and 1923, tribals of Jungle Mahal rose against land lordism. So where is Jungle Mahal? It was a fall out of Chuar rebellion in 1905. As administrative recognition, a new district of Jungle Mahal was created by a regulation with areas of Birbhum, Bardaman, and Midnapur of West Bengal. In 1920, it was Midnapur Jamidari Company who held the land of Jungle Mahal. It was also a period of non cooperation movement led by Congress. Non cooperation movement of Congress turned into revolt. In July 1921, Sailajananda Sen led a demonstration of 200 Santal women and blocked the path of party craft belonging to local landlord. As Congress was with Santals, it established in creativity creditability and Midnapur Jamidari company was identified as an outside outsider and British. Jitu Hemram, more famous as Jitu Santal, was born in 1883 at Kuzbihar in Mangalpura Anchal within the Habibpur Thana of West Bengal. Jitu told people that he will establish Santal Raj and they have to pay only one basket full of paddy as tax in 1931. And people remembering golden days of Chai Champa railed behind him in December 1932, Jitu sent Ram alias Sunna of Bangsihari Dinaspur to occupy the Adina Masque, which would be fit enough to be capital of Santal Raj and independent assembly. The then colonial district magistrate declared this assembly unlawful and ordered to arrest of leaders. Then Santals attacked the police. A constable died with arrow owned while another was wounded by served by Jitu, who subsequently died at hospital later. Police opened fire and four Santal died on the spot, including Jitu. Sixteen Santals were arrested, including injured. Two of them died later in the hospital. To summarize, we can say Santal played a significant role in the Indian freedom movement. Tilka Murmu, Sidhu Murmu, Kanu Murmu, Chand Murmu, Bhairo Murmu, Phulo Murmu, Jhano Murmu, Diba and Kisun, Jitu Hamram took a pioneer role in the Indian freedom movement. I feel very proud as I belong to the Santal Society, which is rich in culture, tradition, belief and philosophy of equality. Whenever I go through the constitution of India, I am moved to see the remarkable feature of the constitution of India, which are empowering for the people of India. However, most of the people of our Santal society are unable to read the constitution due to the language barrier. They were unaware of their own constitution and about their own constitutional rights for that somehow they are deprived of their rights and facilities. Given this fact, I took this initiative to translate the Constitution India into Santali language. Doing this work, I also updated myself and got enriched 
with the knowledge of the constitution of india the largest constitution of largest democratic country there are many provision in indian constitution of india to protect safeguard and preserve the indigenous rights of the scheduled tribes of india in the in the present day these tribes are passing through a very transitional and critical phase due to the impact of globalization they face various challenges in their everyday life to protect their indigenous identity in 21st century given the acute problem of the current climate crisis and consumerist culture across the world i think the slogan of becoming indigenous is a significant way to save to save the nature and human civilization through sustainable development and human moralities which these tribal communities like santals they constitute the constitution of india provides safeguards to maintain such cultural uniqueness of the tribal communities and they should know more about these constitutional rights and the and that is why more and more translation of the constitutional provisions in many indigenous languages are necessary thanks once again all of you for listening thanks to all my colleagues friends and my officers jai hind thank you johar thank you tripathi ji it was a really wonderful presentation and it was so full of information and we we felt uh, educated with uh, the presentation you gave and particularly i was so mesmerized by the depth of your scholarship your knowledge and also uh, uh the the comprehensive presentation that you made not only the constitution but also its, its importance for the indigenous people and scheduled uh, tribe uh, community uh, and also uh, the culture and the richness of your traditions uh, and particularly yeah. i am grateful for reminding us of the historic role played by uh, santal freedom fighters and enormous sacrifices that they made uh my, yeah. my very sincere thanks to you our gratitude to you for sharing your wealth of knowledge and your scholarship with us uh, i had couple of questions like uh when you when you mentioned the preamble of uh, uh, indian constitution and you mentioned how you have translated into santali language then i felt that these those words were quite familiar so do you see like santali language has linguistic ties with uh, maybe bengali and odia or maithili or some others or is falls into a different category altogether it is a different categories oh. from bengali and odia oh and and the script script is also different uh, Oh. and also you mentioned you want know, to given your own background in uh, literature of santali so i would be i'm i have deep interest in poetry particularly so i'll be i'll be very delighted to, if you could connect me with uh, santali poets and also if you can recommend me any anthology of santali poems that uh, uh, might be available uh, in bilingual either hindi translation or english translation i would love to read them also okay, as okay. part also as part of our friendship lecture series uh, and in also in the spirit of ek bharat shreshth bharat uh, we would be very delighted to host uh, similar uh, virtual presentations by uh, santali musicians and dancers now uh, we can do yeah. a virtual presentation if you can uh, help identify that be okay, really sure, nice sure. uh, because sure. yeah to like to uh, because i know that it's a very rich very vibrant music folk music folk dance uh, to i think and also your instrumental music will be very typical uh, i think there could be again very interesting uh, uh, pieces to to present through friendship lecture series yeah yeah Uh, and i believe that our land is extremely rich in its own uh, music and dance and folk traditions so i think there will be a lot of resonance even though they may not understand the language but uh, there will be a lot of appeal at the human level yeah yeah uh, 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the NLC and on behalf of our viewers, I express my gratitude to Mr. Sripati Tudu for taking out time for this informative and wonderful presentation. And I also thank uh, His Excellency the Minister of India for his introductory remarks to the uh, lecture. Thank you so much and Namaskar.